Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. I'm Joe and today we're going to be going over some cool stuff in relation to guardian dogs. So common questions are, you know, what are they like? How do you train them? And how do they interact on the farm and actually protect things? We're going to be answering all that and more. Um, we're jumping in with Mark from Baker's Green Acres and going to be getting like 10 plus years experience and knowledge on this. So thank you for being here. This is the Anyone Can Farm Experience. Okay, so you're going to have a dog on your homestead. The question is, is the dog going to be an asset to you or a liability to you? So let's say that you have a, you know, and all breeds of dogs are different. So if you have a Chihuahua, I mean, it might not do anything bad, but it won't do anything good. You might have, say, a, a retriever type dog and you have to keep him contained on the farm because if he gets away, he'll get in there and kill those chickens. Well, that would be a real liability to you. and It's just like something waiting to happen. Um, but then you could also get a dog that's more suited to the homestead, a livestock guardian dog, specifically the ones we use are Great Pyrenees. And they not only won't kill these animals, they'll protect these animals. So case in point, I have a, a possum laying right here on the ground who if, if it were not for the livestock guardian dogs here on this farm, um, that possum was headed in to these chicks and probably would have killed a pile of them and gotten away scot-free, but uh, he, didn't, he didn't make it, obviously. Uh, usually the Great Pyrenees dog doesn't bring back bodies, uh, but when the pos when it comes to possums, they do, because the possum, you know, it, it plays possum, and then the dog will carry it, and then the thing will jump back up again, and the dog plays with it all night long until it's dead. Um, but skunks and stuff like that, they don't bring back. They just keep them at bay, which I prefer. I don't want to be picking up dead bodies all the time around here. So let's talk about how the Great Pyrenees or the Livestock Guardian Dog, let's talk about how they actually function on the farm, how they actually protect your livestock. I guess there's two ways that I can think of this. It would be the active way where they hear the chickens clucking a little bit at night and they know from the tone of their voices, I, I suspect that there's a problem and they'll come out, they catch this guy, crunch his head, end of story. Then there's the passive deterrence. Like uh, possums are usually the first ones to come out in the spring. Possums and then skunks, right? But the presence of the dog on the farm does a lot too. So what you will wanna do is you will wanna take your dog on walks around the perimeter and just get the dog's smell out there, the dog's scent and um, these types of animals will, will detect that and they'll say, nah, I think I'll go to the neighbor's house, you know, where they have beagles. Um, yeah, so it's a real thing. And even uh, if you take to brushing your dog sometime, those fur balls that you get, you could put them at all corners of your property and that will have a deterring effect as well. Of course, you will never know you know, what effect it had because, well, nothing got killed last night. Was it because of the fur balls or was it because of the, the patrolling nature of the dog? You really won't know, but um, just it makes sense to do that. Okay, let's, let's talk about s system integration. Um, the homestead is a compilation of subsystems. Uh, the Livestock Guardian Dog is a system all its own. Uh, but it's part of a bigger system. It, you know, you have containment, you have the health of the dog, you have the psychological factor of the dog. Um, they're kind of a nice dog to have around. You know, you can pet them and they're a good companion to have around. Uh, of course, you have to treat them right. And a lot of times that's difficult for people because you can't take them to the parade and things like that. But they're a big dog. And so they eat a lot. 
So then we're going to be bringing on something else to give them to feed them. Um, now, if we in integrate them into the, the bigger system, let's say that we are processing our own chickens on, on the farm. They will live on heads and feet. They will live on that. And they will take those heads and feet and they'll bury them throughout the farm and then they'll go back and they'll get them when they need them. Uh, we give them a little bit of kibble here and there just to, just when we're short on stuff, but that's, if we know we're going to have them around and we, we are sure we, we are going to have them around, we'll save up heads and feet when we butcher chickens or when we butcher cattle we'll keep some of the less desirable parts of the, of the animal and we'll put it in bags and freeze it for them. Uh, so they fit in to the system. They're, they're here to protect the livestock, but they also live by the livestock as well. They eat the livestock. So it's kind of interesting in a way when you think about it, like I'm here and I will uh, protect my livestock with everything I have, but then I will eat them as well. It's, it's sort of a dichotomy, but they live in the same world that I live in. Uh, we're, in a lot of ways, we're partners on the farm. So when you get your puppy, I think one of the biggest things that you've got to establish is uh, that the puppy understands that it's its home. So when we got her, we kept her in the house for about a week. We just kept her, you know, we bring her out there in the day to go potty, but we just bring her in the house so she would bond to us. And she was just a little thing then. She's, I don't know, I think she's five months old now. You do want to get them around the animals that they're going to protect when they're young. That, that makes a lot of sense. So um, at some point in their, in their young life, when they're adolescent, adolescent dogs, like Chloe is, it's just that time of the year while we, while we have, we're going to have chicks. So we brought Chloe over and basically handed her a chick. You know, hand, put it right in her face and she can kind of nose it and grab a hold of it a little bit. And if she were to try and take that, I would say no, no. And we'd do that a couple of times. And then she seems to pick it up really quick that these are her animals to guard. She's there to make sure that they stay safe. Um, and we can do that with baby pigs. Uh, I, I don't really worry about the dogs hurting baby pigs. Um, calves, things like that. Chloe's already, she's already been out there and looked at the calves and barked at them and the calves don't really care about Chloe. Uh, but the livestock guardian dog is not like the poodle that jumps in the car with you and goes to the supermarket. Or, uh, you know, these days you see people taking dogs into every store. It's not that kind of dog. As a matter of fact, you don't want them to know that anything exists outside of your homestead. You want them to think that this is it. This is, this is their world. So when you've got them contained, that's it. You don't take them out unless you have to, you know, take them to the vet for something. Uh, but you just don't want to be taking them to parades and things like that to show them off. You want to keep them focused on what goes on at the farm. Uh, likewise, you don't want your friends bringing their dogs over because that confuses your dog. You know, your dog is being praised when he kills a possum, but what? You're not going to praise him if he kills your friend's beagle, you know? He needs to kill that beagle because that beagle can kill a lot of your chickens and that has actually happened here. So you don't want other dogs coming into the space of your livestock guardian dog. The livestock guardian dog is a, it's a part of a system and this system isn't a, a free-for-all, you know, anybody's dogs can come and run around and urinate wherever they want. You don't want that. You don't want that at all and you really have to make that rule known. Nope, your dog's not welcome here. All right guys, so if you're finding these tips helpful, if you could do us a huge favor, we work on these videos really hard, if you could give us a like, if you wanna see more, go ahead and subscribe, but you know that like really helps the algorithms and helps us reach more people and you know get the word out about guardian dogs. So if you do that, really appreciate it. Let's jump back into this. Okay, so let's talk about containing these dogs. 
Containment is more than, for them, it's more than the way we contain the livestock. Uh, we, we want to restrict them to an area, but we also want to try and maintain their focus on what they're supposed to be doing. So where I'm standing right now, uh, about 100 yards that way is the road, right? And cars go down the road, and tractors go down the road. And when they hear that, they're like, whoa, that's something, I have to go look at that. And when they see it, and it's moving fast, then they say, oh, I gotta keep up with that, I gotta bark at that, I gotta scare that away, whatever it is. And so their focus is on the road, and it's not on the farm. So what we did is we put the in-ground fence in, and I have a collar right here, and it's got those two probes on it, and I would not want this on me. The whole system is about 300, but I bought this system 10 years ago, and it's, you know, it's well paid for by now, and it's still functioning really well. And what we did is we put, we've reaccomplished the fence just recently again, because I realized that I want to take the visual sensation away from the dogs. So they just heard that tractor go down the road right there. That's my neighbor. But he can't see it. He can't see it because the fence is right here and the dog can't get any closer than this. And he's down here. So he can't see anything out there. He may hear it, but he doesn't see it. So he kind of, I think I'll just continue to sleep here. And uh, you might think that it would be, it would just lull them to sleep, but it doesn't. It, it helps them focus on the back of the property and that's where they're needed. They are not needed up by the front of the property. So in my case, I have two sensors. I have two, uh, two fence chargers, actually. The fence charger keeps this from going on, from turning on. I have one in the garden shed here and I have one over in the wood shop. And one of them protects the driveway. This one protects the yard and the, the garden. So we keep them out of the garden just because we don't like digging up bones in the garden. They love to bury stuff. All right, so in my case, uh, this farm is fenced with 39-inch woven wire. And there's a strand of barbed on top of that. And generally, the, the Great Pyrenees are not going to go over that, generally. I mean, they can, but they don't really need to. There's enough room and there's enough other things for them to nose around with. And so what we want to do is we want to take their focus off of the road and push them to the back of the property. So uh, if I want to have ducks on the pond, I want those protected. Um, and that's quite a ways down, but that'll work. I mean, but they have to have access to it. So I'm actually using not just the fence. I'm using or not just the in-ground fence. I, I use that and that protects the front here where we're not going to have fencing, you know, up against the road, which I wouldn't want to have anyway because they would run right up against the road. I don't want that. I'm pushing them back to here where they can't see the road. If I could push them back further, I probably would, but then they wouldn't have access to the back door of the house, which they need and I want them to have. Um, but to prevent them from leaving the farm in the back of the property, there's a hard fence and that keeps them off. There is one other option too, and that is an electric fence. And once they get buzzed on an electric fence, you'll hear it, you'll hear it because they take it pretty personally and they will never forget that again. So if they get buzzed on a fence, let's say you don't have the, the setup that I do and you have to do something to prevent them from getting to the road, Maybe sometimes they go through this, which they get real excited. Uh, you know, a, a family member's driving down the road or something, they get real excited and they bust through. Uh, you may have to put up a strand of electric wire and they'll g hit that one time and that'll probably be it. And you might just leave it there without a charger on it or eventually take it down and they'll still remember where it was and they'll be kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that again. All right, so they, they have to be managed. And the management system, you may reconfigure it 
several times before you get it right where you want it to be. Like this is 15 years of having these dogs and I've reconfigured it just this spring. And uh, I'm glad I did because it's, it's changed quite a bit. Okay, so let's talk about what it's like for you as a human to live with Great Pyrenees Guardian dogs on your farm. You know, they could be the greatest dog uh, when it comes to livestock guarding, but they could be really difficult to live with. They can be, they can be, if they're not managed correctly. We've seen where people have gotten these dogs and um, not understood the fencing part of it well enough, and the dogs wind up, wind up in pens. And it's just not a good situation. You can't enjoy the dog like I can now. Like, she'll sit here, we'll put her head in my lap, and she's a good petting dog, and she looks at me, and she really likes me. Um, but if I have to put her on a chain, mm, that's not so good because it defeats the purpose of her ability to wander around and put her scent down every place and really be the guardian dog that she's supposed to be. So uh, if you handle them properly and you get your facilities up and running before they come to you, you'll have a much better time of it. Uh, as far as a dog around kids, it's really nothing better. I. I they're really gentle with my kids. Uh, my younger kids just lay all over them and play with them. Um, there's never been an aggressive action on them. As a matter of fact, a couple times there's been kids here that we don't know that have picked up their puppies and played with them and uh, not had a problem. Uh, like when I get up in the morning, they greet me, want to be petted on the head, and then they want to go lie down. They don't really want much from me. And she's staying here right now because I'm petting her. But if I stop petting her, she'll just go find someplace cool to lay down in. That'll be it. So they're, they're pretty easy keepers. I, I think they're nice dogs to have around. All right, there we go, guys. Everything about guardian dogs and non-guardian dogs like this lovable idiot. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.